In Haircut, Farmer John is going to get a haircut. So he has n strands of hair in a line, and each one of these is going to have a certain height. Farmer John is going to cut his hair at length j, where all of the different strands with a length greater than j are going to become length j. So for each of these cuts of some length j, he wants to know how many inversions, so that inversions follow this rule, are there for each cut. Let's go look at the algorithm for this question. So there are two parts to this question. The main way we are going to solve this is using bit trees. So what we can do is, let's assume we have unique heights. So we can assume that all of the hair on Farmer John's head have unique different lengths. In that case, we're going to use a bit tree in order to solve and find our answer. So as we read it in, we would see, okay, we're going to dynamically update. We're going to have our three here. So that's going to be one. And then, so the answer value in this case is going to be zero since there is no hair that is greater than it or with a greater height so far. And then we're going to have five and then we update one here. This is also going to be zero since again, there's nothing greater than it. Then we're going to do four. And in four's case, we can see using the bit tree that there is one hair greater than it. So that's going to make it a one. And then for our two, there are going to be three hairs greater than it. So it's going to be three. And then with one, there are going to be four hairs greater than it, which is going to be four. And then we add them all up, eight. So a bit tree in its simplest form is basically going to allow us to, as we sweep from left to right, we're going to have our current i. And for this current i value, we're going to have our current bit tree. And before we've updated the bit tree, at any point, so let's say we're going back to when i was equal to 4, at this point, our current bit tree, when we're at this i, is only going to contain the values that have the smaller indexes. So the values with indexes smaller than our current one. So in order to find the number of inversions, all we have to do is find the number of values with a greater height. Since everything in this bit tree has a smaller index, all we're gonna do is find the number with a greater height. And so that's just going to be the last value minus the initial value or our current i. And then that's just going to give us the number of values or the number of hairs with a smaller index and a greater value. So because we're dynamically updating from left to right, all of the values have a smaller index in this bit tree. And all of these values with a smaller index in the bit tree, we're going to count the number with a greater value. And that's going to give us the number of inversions for each value. And so for each of these hairs, once we have the number of inversions, then we can just count them up and add them together. Okay, so the next thing we're going to address is going to be the actual hair cut. So once we have our hair cut, what we can notice is if we cut hair to a certain height, let's say we cut it to height 4 right now, the only values that are affected are values with heights greater than or equal to 4. So for example, a hair with height 3 is still going to have the same number of inversions, since if this hair right here is height 5 or height 4, it doesn't really matter since it's still going to be higher than this hair of height 3. So same goes for like this hair of height 2. For this value here, it's still not going to affect the number of inversions for this specific hair. So for any hair less than the haircut height, the number of inversions is the same. The only difference is for a number that is greater than or equal to 4, all of their inversions are now gone. Since when 4 used to have one inversion in this specific example, now the 5 has been cut down, so 4 has 0 inversions, and anything with a greater height than 4, or anything with a greater height than the current haircut length, is going to have 0 inversions. We can actually notice that the question asks us to basically 
count and find the number of inverses for different heights. And so what we can do is we can make the observation that when we cut at a certain height, the number of total inverses is equal to the number of inverses for each individual hair if those hairs are less than our current height. So all of the hairs with a greater height, like I just mentioned, all of these inverses don't count. And for our current height, that inverse doesn't count either. The only numbers that count are the numbers with a smaller height. So the hairs with a smaller height. Those are going to have the same number of inverses. And so if I have this array here as in v, i and v, we can basically define something like i and v i, in this case 4, is equal to i and v 1 plus 2 dot 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 i and v i minus 1. Since all we need to do is add up the total inverses of numbers that are less than or have a smaller height than our current hair. So whatever number we cut it at is going to be our i number, or actually this value in the question is j. So whatever number we cut that at, the value is just going to be equal to the number of inverses for everything that is from 1 all the way until the end. So in order to actually implement this, we're going to go from the smallest possible height up to the greatest possible height. So we can calculate the value if we have a haircut of 1, and that's just going to be 0 since they're, everything's going to be the same height, it's all going to be 1. And then we can calculate the number of inverses for height 2. And in that case, it's going to be the value of i and v1, since it's going to just be from 1 all the way until 2 minus 1, which is 1. And then the value at i and v3, sorry, the answer at haircut 3 is just going to be equal to the previous answer plus i and v2. And then at 4, it's just going to be the previous answer plus i and v3. And then at 5, it's the previous answer plus i and v4. So what we're basically doing is we're building up. And since we're going in this specific order, we don't have to re-loop through and calculate this value. We can just take our previous answer and then add the last value. So C is just going to be i and v1. And then the next answer is going to be i and v1 plus i and v2, which is just our previous answer. And then i and v1 plus 2 plus 3, so our previous answer plus i and v3. i and v1 all the way to 4, and then basically our previous answer plus i and v4. So when we loop through, and then you'll see this in the code, it's just going to be a for loop of j from 1 to n, and then it's just going to be the value of itself plus i and v and then this whatever value it is. So note that these are going to be the actual values or the heights of the hairs. They're not going to be the indexes. So when we loop through, we're going to need to basically loop from the heights. So it's going to be here, and then we're going to take the i and v of this value, and then here, and then the i and v of this value. And then the final thing we need to address is, what if we have multiple values? And in this case, we will have duplicate heights. So for example, if we had another thing here, where we also had another two, the way we're gonna address that is, we're actually going to kind of keep an array of the order of heights. So what we're gonna do is, we're going to have a vector or an array called order, and then that value is basically going to store a list of the indexes mapped to their values, meaning we have our original list here, and then we're going to store a list that's going to contain the indexes, but from a size of from the smallest value to the largest value. So that's just going to look like if we move this, so we have three, four, 3, 5, 4, 2, 1, 2. And then their indexes currently are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then so our order list is going to basically be 5 and then 4 or 6. It doesn't really matter the order of these two. 
and then the next biggest value is this 3 here, so that's going to be 1, then 4, 3, 2. So this, this list here goes in the order of how big this list, the original list is. So 1 is the smallest, so this 5 index is going to be here, and then 2 is the next smallest, so the 4 and the 6 are going here, and then the 1 here, and that's going to be this value, and so on and so forth. Once we have this order, we're actually going to keep two pointers. So as we loop through this j here in a for loop, we're also going to loop through another value i. And this i is just going to loop through these indexes, and we're going to have a while loop. And this while loop is basically going to loop through and say, while this current value is the same, so for example, when we have these two duplicates, instead of just adding i and v2, what we would do is we would add all versions of i and v2. So in this new example, we're going to start at 1, and then we're going to add i and v1. And then once we reach the height of 2, we're going to add both i and v2s. So we're going to add this i and v2 and this i and v2. And then if we have repeats of other items, we'll just add all of their values. So at every stage, we're just going to add all of the values or all of the inverses with the value of this current value. So let's go look at the code to see this in action. We have our input here, so I'm going to read in the input, and then in this program, we're going to have ll as long long, meaning anytime you see ll, it just means long long. As we read in our value of our inputs, which is going to be stored in hairs, we're also going to create a vector called inverse. So inverse is going to store the number of inverses for this current index before we do any haircuts. So that value is going to be i minus 1, which is the number of hairs before, so that's the number of hairs we've already seen total, minus query and then hairs i. So query hairs i is going to give us the number of hairs previous or to our left that have a smaller value. This is the total number of hairs to our left. So this is going to give the number of inverses, so the number of hairs with a greater height that have a smaller index than our current i. And then since we're going to be using a bit tree in order to store this, we have query and update. And then I'm just going to paste in the regular query and update functions. This is the same as any other bit trees program. So we're also going to create our order. And I'm going to create a vector, literally called order. And I'm going to use iota to fill it with all of the values from 1 to n. And then I'm just going to sort these values, and here I'm using a custom comparator that's basically just going to sort the order by the size of hairs. So depending on the hairs value, it's going to sort the order and it's going to give the index of the values. So it's going to be the indexes of the hairs sorted in the least to greatest order uh, in the vector hairs. Once we've done that, we can start calculating our answer. So I'm going to output zero in the beginning, since that's what the question is going to ask for. And then we're going to have our loop. So we're going to loop from i and j. So j is going to be our haircut. And then we're going to go from the smaller values to the greater values. So from 1 all the way to n. And every time we do that, we're going to have our second pointer, or our i. And i is just going to loop through, and it's going to check to see while i is less than n, and the current value of i, or actually hair's order i, which is going to be the height of the value of this current i, while that value is less than or equal to j, this is just going to keep looping until we solve all duplicates. So most of the times this is only going to go in once, but when we have a duplicate or multiple duplicates, it's just going to keep looping. We're going to add the inverse of that value, into our answer, and then we're going to add 1 to i. So this is going to increment our i from the smallest hairs to the largest, where order i is the index in our original array, hairs i is the height, and then i is just the order from smallest to greatest of the smallest values of our current index, or of our current hairs. And then we're going to output our answer every time.
and that's the end of our program.